ladies and gentlemen, some of you say, I don't care! And I gotta turn that off. But some of you will say, I don't care. Some of you will say that this has nothing to do with me. I gotta be kind of quiet. The dogs are asleep. And, you know, you don't want to wake the kids up. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to care. Notice this. First, the plaintiff attempts to invoke the federal question jurisdiction of this court through the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. Is not well founded. The United States Supreme Court, not the Supreme Court of the United States, has held that the Northwest Ordinance of 1787 has been superseded by the Constitution of those states, including Michigan, which were originally part of the Northwest Tor ter 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 Territory. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. The Supreme Court doesn't get to do that. Congress does that. You guys do know that Congress writes the laws? I write the laws that make the whole world. Okay, so since Congress writes the laws, who are the Supreme Court to pay attention, to hold, to have, and to hold that the Northwest Ordinance of 1787 has been superseded? Now, it hasn't been superseded by the Constitution, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Hold on, that's why it matters, mother, I mean, people. That's why it matters. Now, the first thing, there are two cases here that talked about the Northwest Ordinance and its abolition. Okay, and I'm trying to find the other one real quick, and if I can't, we just gonna move on. See, improvement navigation through the constructive dam has been held not to violate the Northwest Ordinance. That's 1877. 1877. So in 18, pay attention, 1877, this is still in effect. 1931, still in effect. Pay attention, not to violate the Northwest Ordinance. Well, how could it violate something that was superseded? Shh. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell don't don't you dare go tell nobody about this. Okay? That's not what I wanted to show you. I'm just now seeing that one for the first time. And like I said, show you how my mind thinks. That's the first time you have my word that I saw that case. I haven't gone over all of these. Even before statehood, the Northwest Ordinance forbade slavery, and it has been forbidden in every Michigan Constitution. So why did they have slavery? Like, ladies and gentlemen, the Northwest Ordinance forbade slavery. If you wanted to be a state of the United States, you could not have slavery. You must recognize habeas corpus and the right to a trial by jury. That was the Northwest Ordinance. I, I didn't, hey, I want y'all to pay attention to this right here. This is not some um, sovereign citizen going before the court. Okay? Confer equality upon the Negro in the ownership of property. Now, you notice the Northwest Ordinance doesn't use any terms such as the Negro. Okay? I, I don't want this. No, I didn't ask for that. Go back to, yeah, go back. I ain't, I ain't asked for that. Get on out of here. Civil Rights Act of 1866. Okay, that's what created Negroes. Don't believe me? Go back and read it. Give me a second. I'm looking for the other one. I may not be able to find it real quick. And if I'm not able to find it, then we just going to move on. Hey, son, why don't you just move on? You better go call your mama so your son. Mother. Uh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a copy of the Northwest Ordinance. Let me go ahead and show you some things. See, be it ordained by the United States Congress assembled. So this was the General Assembly of Congress at the time. This was government. It was called the Northwest Ordinance because it controlled the territories of government. Okay? Now notice that the said territory for the purpose of temporary government. That's why you see where they talk about District of Columbia is the permanent seat of government? 
They wanted to say that there was a permanent government. There is never a permanent government in the United States, ladies and gentlemen. There is never a permanent government in the United States, ladies and gentlemen. The government is constantly changing. Constantly changing. Every four years, government is upheated and upraveled and turned around and spun around. Every six years with the Senate. Government is constantly changing. It is not permanent. Don't believe me? That's why they call them administrations. All right, let's continue. We're not going to rate the whole thing. Be it ordained by the authority of the aforesaid Congress that the estates of both residents and non-resident proprietors in said territories dying interstate shall descent to be distributed among their children. The descendants of the deceased child in equal parts, the descendants of the deceased child or grandchild to take their shares of their deceased parents in equal parts among them, being fair. And where there should be no children or descendants, then in equal parts, uh, excuse me, to the next kin, equal degrees. And among collaterals, the children of the deceased brother or sister or the interstate shall have in equal parts among them their deceased parents share and there shall be no case distinction between the kindred in whole or in part or half blood or anything no distinction there's still blood i'm sorry i've always had that understanding nobody had to teach that to me my my father's children were my brothers and sisters there was no guessing about it Okay, just that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, what we need to show you with this stupid ordinance, and it is a stupid ordinance because this was the formation of government. See, be it ordained by the authority of the aforesaid Congress that there shall be appointed from time to time by Congress governors. They gave them a thousand acres of land, ladies and gentlemen. Freehold. Hold on. Aloidio. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to pay attention, if you want to gain control of your property, if you want to list your property the correct way, then you need to be reading this Northwest Ordinance because it tells you exactly what to do with your land, how to register it, how to witness it. Okay? How many witnesses are necessary? Let's do that. Let's go directly to it. I know it's around 14 or something like that, but give me a second. I'm, I'm just going to try to look for it this way. We, we, we ain't going to deal with all this other stuff right now. We, we just want you all to understand that this talks about the states coming into the nation, into the union. Okay? You need to understand when this was done, I went too far uh, because this is a slavery part. Article 6. There shall neither be slavery nor involuntary servitude in said territory otherwise for the punishment of a crime, where the party should have been duly convicted, provided always that any person escaping into the same from whom labor or service is lawfully claimed in any one of the original states, such fugitives shall be lawfully reclaimed and conveyed to the person claiming his or her labor or service as aforesaid. Okay. That was the comment on slavery. There was no Negro, as if Negroes could be the only ones who were slaves. Because Negroes was something they created. We're going to put in witness. W-I-T-N-E-S-S. Witnesses. See, there it is right here. Here's your registering your property, ladies and gentlemen. This this section right here, section 2. Be it ordained before said that the estates... Both resident and non-resident proprietors dying in the state. Then it says, until the governor or judge uh, shall adopt laws here and after mentioned, as states of said territory shall be devised and bequest by wills and writing, signed and sealed by him or her, in whom the estate may be, being a full age, attested by three witnesses, and real estate may be conveyed by lease or release or bargain or sell or signed or sealed or delivered to the person being of full age. 
You got to document that you've attained the age of the majority, that's what they're saying, in whom the estate may be, and attest it by two witnesses, provided that such will be duly proved and such conveyances be acknowledged. That's why you got to have an acknowledgement. Just told you all that yesterday. Or the execution thereof be duly proved, be recorded within one year after proper magistrate judge or register shall be appointed for that purpose and personal property may be transferred by delivery saving. However, to the French or Canadian inhabitants, y'all ain't got nothing coming. Okay? Neighboring villages who have therefore possessed themselves or professed themselves citizens of Virginia, their laws and customs now in force among them relative to the descendants or descent, excuse me, and conveyances and uh, property. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're doing right here is we're letting you know they say that the uh, Northwest Ordinance has been abolished. Be it ordained by the authority of the aforesaid that there shall be appointed from time to time Congress, governors, commissioners who shall continue, blah, 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 unless sooner revoked by Congress and shall reside in the district. Now that's one that talks about sooner revoked. Let's go down to the, well, there are several more, see, unless sooner revoked. They're going to continue to say that. Congress is the only one who can revoke the Northwest Ordinance. It was supposed to be temporary until a permanent government was established. But go ahead and look at the preamble. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. It is not perfect, ladies and gentlemen. They are still trying to form it, which makes it, pay attention, temporary. This is what required, see? The said territories and the state which may be formed therein shall forever remain part of this Confederacy of the United States of America. So the United States of America is a Confederacy, ladies and gentlemen, subject to the Articles of the Confederation. So even if they establish the Constitution, they are subject to the Articles of Incorporation and to such alterations therein as shall be constitutionally made, and to all acts and ordinances of the United States Congress assembled conformable thereto. The inhabitants, settlers of said territory shall be subject to pay part of the federal debt, contracted or to be contracted, or proportional parts of the expense of government. This is where you get the taxation from. This is the Northwest Ordinance. This is what it did. Without the Northwest Ordinance, there is no Constitution. No state would have been permitted to have a Constitution. And prior to them having a Constitution, they must have applied for admittance into this Confederacy. So there is no abolishing of the Northwest Ordinance. To abolish the Northwest Ordinance is to abolish the entire government. Because it is because of the Northwest Ordinance that the nations were allowed to come together. The Supreme Court did not have a say on this. Okay, this was not their, this not their ball game. They could only say it was yay or nay. Yay or nay. Done by the United States in Congress assembled the 13th day of July in the year of 1787. And of their sovereignty and independence on the twelfth and that's it okay so ladies and gentlemen if anybody tells you the northwest ordinance has been abolished or it doesn't matter they're lying you just have to show them in the northwest ordinance that it was not to be abolished or repealed it was until government became permanent and anyone who became a part of it was subject to the Articles of the Confederacy. That's why you have people saying that, because they've read this. So don't let no judge just tell you that's not a good argument, or that's a bad argument, or that's this or that. Uh-uh, you had better show me. I'm, I'm tired of y'all just opening and closing your mouths. All right, I got to go. I just wanted to show this to some of y'all, all right? I got to go.